Greetings and salutations, flight fans, and I am back in my uh, bell. I'm going to do my next leg. Uh, I am going out to um, Monster Kiem, which is not too far away. It's, uh, what is that? 25? 50? I think it's... I can't read the scale. I think it's 50 uh, nautical miles uh, northeast of here. So uh, let's uh, let's see how badly I can do this time. It looks like it's a little um, a little rainy. We are just going to... whoops. Ooh. There we go. a little better. Gear up. It's definitely a windy day today. Got my torque a little high. Right, so, off we go again. We're going to go out over the uh, the rest of the Oran district. And we're going to pass over, uh, what's this place called? Sidi Shami. Uh, it's a small town, a commuter town for uh, for Oran itself. Uh, it's also served... Um, it also serves uh, the small town for uh, Bir El Dejir, I think which is just north of here. The town itself actually is uh, served by um, like three smaller little areas. Um, uh, the former uh, St. Remy, uh, the uh, former St. George's actually, and um, Chetabio. Uh the village actually, the the, the, the colonial village of uh, City Shami was uh, actually created in Just there, we should be passing over. What? Uh, what the heck is the name of this? It's a. It's a reserve. It's. It's one of those weird wetland reserve things. Um, Salinas de Azu, I believe, is how you pronounce it. I think. I'm not sure. It's actually part of. The, it's really strange to think that you've got um, a wetland reserve right here, and yet less than. 25 miles away, you've got a uh, what is essentially a, a, a desert. It's very, very odd. It's an interesting area. It looks like we're coming up on uh, Mers El Hajad. Hajad. <laughs> I'll pronounce that. Um, it's actually the translation is uh, Port Pilgrims by the uh, by the Algerians, and it's weird. It, it may be a a, um, a mistranslation from uh, the French name Port Hens. Uh, there's a a phonetic uh, and uh, a graphic Arabic word for pilgrim and one for chickens, which are extremely similar. Um, another one is, uh, you know, it, it, it could be referring to the uh, to the moor hens or swamp hens that actually 
uh, live in the area because of the wetlands. Now the area itself, the, the port itself, has actually been around since uh, since the Romans. It was actually created by the Romans, apparently, uh, in um, 225 AD. Uh, and it was a, a very um, prosperous area. Uh, it's it's uh, settled on uh, between two rocky points, um, and there's a, a big uh, a big natural uh, gully, like 150 meter deep, I believe, uh, which which actually is you know handy for uh, for large boats. <laughs> And uh, many, uh, many relics, actually, from the Roman period keep turning up in the area. Um, and quite easily point to this being a, a well-established trading port uh, during the time. So we have the airport in sight. So we are coming up on the Monstagenem. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, it's another. It's another uh, port-based city. Um, it's part of the province of uh, the same name, actually. Well enough, the city itself was founded in the 11th century and lies on the Gulf, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and is uh, part of the uh, the Oran district. Sorry, it's not. Wait, yeah, no, sorry, it's part of Oran, but it is its own district. That's better. <laughs> Now, the city itself has actually been around for quite some time. Uh, it was founded in the 11th century, but, you know, it, it, uh, it goes back again to the Roman times. Um, but uh, in uh, 1516, it was actually captured by the Ottoman Empire and became uh, a center for Mediterranean Sea Corsairs, as well as a commercial port. But, of course, along came the French in uh, 1833, and that all changed quite dramatically. The, the city itself actually is divided in two by a ravine uh, for the river Anisefra. And um, <laughs> you've got a modern town in the southwest and then you've got an older uh, Muslim-based city in the, uh, in the northeast. Uh, it sounds like it would be a rather interesting place to visit. Now the airport itself actually um, is a relic from World War II. Um, the airport itself actually has no real commercial air service and there isn't a great deal of uh, general aviation that uses it either. It's, uh, it's basically just, like I said, a relic from World War II and is often used uh, today. Uh, for uh, you know, brief stopovers for uh, modern aircraft uh, going off to uh, to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, most commonly is the uh, the C-47 Skytrain. That is, is what you're likely to see there these days.
How's that? Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> we'll put her on the runway. At least we'll try. This is a uh, small airport. Not uh, not a great deal of scenery here. Well, that's that. Um, I realized um, when I land the gazelle. I tend to come in and skid to a stop, uh, but this thing has wheels, so it tends to roll out, and I think that's what's been freaking me out. Um, I can't, for some reason, I just can't do that that stop, hover, and gentle touchdown. I have to do a very um, aeroplaney kind of landing, you know, come in on a forward slope and just wait for the wheels to touch. But it's better than I've been doing in the past. At least there was no chance of me tipping this thing over. Anyway, that's it for the minute. I think I'm going to sit here and wait for this, uh, because there's another big uh, cell in front of me. Up, oh, see? Yeah, there's another big weather cell in front of me. So we're going to sit here and wait for that to go away.